All right, so we'll pick up back up with uh, day two from chapter 10.2 um, on means um, and uh, uh, look at significance tests for the difference in two means. So an observed difference between two sample means can reflect an actual difference in the parameters. Again, we always use uh, our samples to estimate our parameters. Um, so uh, can reflect the actual difference, or it just might be due to chance variation in random sampling or random assignment. Significant tests help us decide which explanation makes more sense. So our null hypothesis has the general form. We will have this general form uh, that the difference between those two is our hypothesized value. Well, our hypothesized value, if there is no difference, again, null hypothesis has to be some form of equality or no difference. And if there's no difference between the two population means, our hypothesis value should be zero. And that's what we're saying down here, is that uh, the difference between our two means should be zero, or many times we just like to write it like this, and just do a little algebra and add mu sub 2 to both sides uh, to get this, show this equality. Well, again, then our alternative uh, is that it's a one-tailed test to the right, so one-tailed test to the left, or it's a two-tailed test. Well, to do a test, we need to standardize the difference in the uh, sample means to get a two-sample t-statistic. And again, we'll do a t-statistic because we rarely, if ever, know what our population standard deviation is. And as always, uh, if we're doing any type of a test statistic, it's always your statistic. In our case here, it's the difference between our sample means. Our parameter is the difference between our population means. And again, many times this will simply just be zero because that's what our hypothesized value is, that there is no difference between those two. And then again, notice in our standard deviation, the statistic, this is actually uh, our standard error because we used uh, sam uh, sample data rather than population data. So I'm going to realize this is the sample variance uh, being added together because we can't add standard deviations. Uh, so we'll add those sample variances together and then square root. So to find that p-value, that p-value, because again, remember we compare our p-value to our alpha, and if our p-value is less than our alpha value, that's when we reject the null hypothesis, and when our p-value is greater than our alpha, uh, that's when we fail to reject our null hypothesis. So again, we'll use that t distribution. And again, remember with degrees of freedom, we'll either use technology, which we'll demonstrate in class, uh, or you just use the smaller of the two degrees of freedom from each of the samples. And if the conditions are met, we can test that hypothesis. Again, test the hypothesis, uh, the null hypothesis uh, right here, I guess, equals that hypothesis value, and generally that's going to be uh, zero. Uh, and we'll use our test statistic here. And uh, once we find that t-value, we can use uh, table B to find that p-value by calculating the probability of getting a test statistic this large or larger. Again, that's the definition of p-value. Uh, that, that's the probability of getting that value or something more extreme in the direction specified by the alternative hypothesis. And realize again that if we're greater than, we've got a right-tailed test. If we're light, less than, we've got a left-tailed test. If it's not equals to, then we've got a two-tailed test. So, using two sample T procedures wisely, in planning a two-sample study, Try as best as you can to choose equal sample sizes. And sometimes that's not always possible, but that's always our goal is to keep those sample sizes equal. Because 
uh, we don't want to pool the two sample T procedures, um, especially if those two sample sizes are significantly different. So uh, when we do our calculator uh, exercise, they'll get an option to say, do you want to pool it? Do not use pooled two sample T procedures because uh, there's some major differences that can happen if your sample sizes are not equal. So we are safe using two sample T procedures for comparing two means in a randomized experiment. So uh, if we don't have random selection, as long as we have random allocation of the uh, experiment, we should be okay. Do not use two, two sample T procedures on paired data. So this goes back to chapter nine when we had paired data, paired T test. And that's kind of looking at like maybe a before or after situation uh, where we're looking at the difference uh, you know, between uh, two treatments on one person. Uh, again, don't do two sample T procedures when you can use paired data. Remember we had like the one list and you had all the data here and you had your second list and you had all the data. And then we found the difference between those two lists. Uh, if we can do that, that's a lot better than doing two sample T procedures. And then be aware of making inferences in the absence of randomization. Again, randomization is so key, so key. Uh, if you can't get random selection of your subjects, make sure you have random allocation of the treatments. Uh, so just be aware uh, that if you don't have that randomization uh, in making your inferences. Uh, so especially Again, if we don't have random selection, then the results may not may not be generalized to the larger population. You can only talk about uh, the the sample that we uh, that we had and, and uh, notice the differences there. Okay, well there we go. We're done uh, with section ten point two on comparing two means. So again, you should be able to describe the shape. You know, look to see if it's normal. Describe that center. Again, our, the difference in our sample data should be the difference in our population data. We're looking at spread, kind of the key thing there is making sure that you can't just add or subtract standard deviations. You've got to work with variances. Um, should be able to determine whether the conditions are met for doing inference. Again, that's our sin, uh, simple random sample, independence, the 10% condition, and the normality piece. Again, making sure that we've got sample sizes above 30 or that we're sampling from a uh, normal distribution, and uh, without that, uh, make sure then that if the sample size is below 30, you don't know if it's a uh, coming from a normal population that you do graph it and make sure you do not have uh, you know skewness um, or outliers. You should be able to construct and interpret a confidence interval. So again, that relates back to the chapter eight material, and being able to calculate you know the lower bound and the upper bound. Uh, from our sample data to see if our null hypothesis is contained within that. Should be able to perform a significance test. That's again from chapter 9 where we do our p-value compared to our alpha um, and uh, make conclusions appropriately. And then lastly, uh, should be able to determine when it's appropriate to use two sample T procedures versus the paired T procedures. So again, if you are if you have paired data uh, you want to make sure you're doing a paired T procedure, the stuff that we did back in chapter nine, uh, rather than doing two sample procedures. So again, save this for you know two distinct different samples. Uh, again, if this one's kind of a if the paired T date T procedure is reserved for uh, like before and after on the same subject, uh, you know, when you're mat doing a matched uh, pairs experimental design. All right, well, here we go, chapter 10, we are done. And at this point then, you should be able to do the following problems. Uh, from day six, you should be able to uh, perform a significance test to compare two means and determine when it's appropriate to use the two sample T procedures versus paired T procedures, and then do these problems right here. So wish you luck, and we'll see you in chapter 11.